God, we just thank you for your amazing blessing. We thank you for the amazing package that you've given us in Christ, that we can live and move and have our being, that we can bring heaven to earth, that, Father God, you've made a way for us to live in right relationship with you, that our, 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 our connection, Father God, just gets deeper and deeper. And that you're a God that is patient and kind and with an amazing love for us. It said in the song that you, we drown in perfect love. And so, Father God, with that vision of just the, a father that adores his kids, Father God, I just pray that the eyes of our understanding this morning be, be open, be filled with light, that we see things we've never seen before, that you draw near to us, Holy Spirit, and speak to our heart, speak to us that we'd never be the same. That, Father God, today would be a, a day that we step over just closer and closer to you. And, Father God, I just praise and I thank you. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you, Father God, that you're a good, good father and that we are your kids and that we have an amazing Father in heaven. So, Father God, today, we just ask that your presence, the Holy Spirit, would be with us, lead and guide us, and open our eyes to the great mysteries of you, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Last week, Meg preached a great sermon, didn't she? Anybody here? Well, not many. Uh, yeah, you're all here. Um, Meg preached a great sermon. Um, it's great to see you guys back from Europe. Did you have a great time? Awesome. Terrific. Well, what's not to love about Europe? Anyway, it's good to see some people back. Hello. We've got some new visitors today. Shane and Crystal, welcome. <laughs> and others, so welcome. Um, to, yeah, last week, Meg um, spoke about and reminded us that Jesus brought us the full package of victory in him. And we've been singing about that this morning that we're no longer a slave, but God has brought us close in. And she talked about the resurrection power that Christ has brought for us, the victory. And she also talked about how the revelation of that in communion. And it says that when we take it, we are declaring Christ. Now, we need to declare Christ not just on Sundays. We declare Christ in our lives. Feel free, and we encourage everybody Take communion. Take communion when you're going through challenges. Take communion when you're triumphing. When we take communion, we are declaring Christ in our lives. It's a prophetic proclamation of the power of the blood and the new covenant in which we live. And it's a powerful covenant. It's not a covenant of, um, it's not a covenant of, of fear or trembling, or, um, but it's a covenant of love. God didn't just say, I have love. He says, he is love. In 1 John, it says, God is love. And perfect love casts out all fear. As we receive that love, and it is a choice to receive the love of God every day. And so today, um, well, actually, Meg also spoke about our vertical alignment with heaven, which brings us into the very presence of God to knowing that he's a, a good, good father and actually drawing close to him, that he's patient and kind with you, that his goodness knows no bounds and that he has plans and purposes for our lives and he wants to us to actually get a, a revelation of how wonderful and how beautiful he sees us. But he delights in us. Actually, in Ephesians 2, it says that we are his poetry. I don't know about you, but I've never been anybody's poetry. Have you? That we are his poetry. That's beauty. It's creative. It's enduring. And we, we live out of this relationship that it, it allows us and sets us on a firm foundation that we can love people horizontally. But if we're not a receiver from God, if, we've, if our eyes have got dim on who we are to God and who God is to us, it's hard to love others 
to the measure that God's called us to. Bless you. Isn't it? And this is why Sundays are so important. Not just Sundays, but every day, that we sing and declare who he is. See, God actually established worship, not because he needs all the praise, but we need to praise him because it takes our eyes off the situation and establishes him as the king of all. It puts him where he is and allows us to lift our eyes from life to the king of kings and God's supernatural way of dealing with things. He deals with things differently than us. And as we do that, we walk in unity with one another so much better. With love, commitment, and with that patience and kindness things. Remember in 1 Corinthians 13, isn't it funny? People sometimes are afraid of God. But when God describes love, the first couple of words that come out, love is patient and kind. So when you go to God, love is patient and kind because God is love. So he's going to be patient and kind with you. So we don't hide from God, we run to God. We run to him knowing that he's our father, he's our protector, he's our provider. He adores us and he sees the very best in us. Today I'm going to be talking about our identity and how we see ourselves in the big picture of life. Um, I don't know if you've ever sat next to somebody on the plane and they start to strike up a conversation with you and they start to ask you questions, don't they? What do you do? Who are you? And you start to describe yourself to a total stranger. And what I realised is that I actually rarely put God in the midst of that first conversation. Yet, he's the very core of my being. So I'm going to ask you this morning... Where does your identity come from? Is it your job? Your family? Your friends? Your hobbies? Your sports? Words from significant others? Negative? Negativity? Shame? Guilt? Failures and success? All of these play a role or have an element in our lives. But they don't define who we are. They don't define what God's called us and purpose us to be. Children of the Most High God. And yet, sometimes we use these type of things to describe who we are instead of what God says we are. I want to challenge us today. and It's funny... This is a message that, you know, we've heard before and we'll probably continue to hear it because, you know what, I'm, I'm never, I don't believe mankind or we are slow learners. I don't think we're slow learners, but we are quick forgetters. We forget things. We forget how good God's been. We forget his amazing provision. We forget the miracles that you've done in that moment. And, and we get so busy with life and we've, we've missed it. We've, we, we get past it so quickly. But God has called us to remember. Remember what he said to Abraham. As often as you see the stars in the sky, remember. Remember, so your children shall be. And in the day, he said, as often as you look at the sand. Now, they're in the desert, man. There's lots of sand. Anybody been to Israel? There's a lot of sand in Israel, let me assure you. As long as you see the sand, that's how many your children. So even day and night, he had a visual a remembrance of what God has promised him. And there's promises that God's promised you that you've gone, oh, well, I've just forgotten them. Have you ever dug up some of the prophetic words or the encouraging words that people have given you and started looking at them again and gone, wow, I didn't, I don't think I'd, I didn't, I, I'd never read that before. But of course we had, we'd written it down. There's a remembering and we've got to always continue to be in remembrance of the goodness of God and identity. I'm going to read to you Ephesians. Ephesians is my favorite book in the Bible. Ephesians and, well, Psalms as well and Proverbs. But anyway, Ephesians. When I went to Bible college, and I've said this before, when I went to Bible college, I had a, um, a friend at Bible college and I was a really poor reader. I didn't read because actually I couldn't see the words. 
because I never wore my glasses, but I'd actually never practiced reading. And she would make me, this friend, make me every morning get up and read the whole chapter, which at that stage was a lot, the whole chapter of Ephesians out loud every morning. And it actually started to shift my identity. I think you all, everybody pretty much knows Pete Dover. Well, of course, I'm his twin. And growing up next to Pete, it was kind of being a little bit into a shadow. You might understand that. Pete's dazzling, isn't he? He's an amazing guy, and I adore my brother Pete. But actually growing up as the twin sister, it was easy for me just to support Pete and you know, adore Pete and help and, so, and be that person for him. And I never really developed some areas of me. Who was I? I was Pete's sister. But you know, it shifted. When I went to Bible college, Pete wasn't there. I was all on my own in many ways. No family, nobody that I know. And God started to develop something in me. He started to establish me in what he said about me, not what others said about me. And this is what I'm going to start with Ephesians here. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read a few different translations today. But I love the, um, this in the message translation. And it goes like this. Ephesians 1, we'll start in verse 3. How blessed is God and what a blessing he is. And the other translation says, he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. He's the father of our master, our Lord Jesus Christ, and takes us to high places of blessing in him. Long before he laid down earth's foundation, he had us in mind. He had settled on us as the focus of his love. The focus of his love. Long, long ago, he decided to adopt us, this is mankind, into the family through Jesus Christ. What pleasure he took in planning this. He wanted us to enter into the celebration of this lavish gift giving by the hand of his beloved son. And because of the sacrifice of the Messiah, his blood poured out on the altar of the cross, we are all free. Free from the penalties and punishments chalked up by our own misdeeds. And not just barely free, either abundantly free. He thought of everything and provided for everything we could possibly need, letting us in on, letting us in on the plans he took so much delight in making. He set us, he set it all out before us in Christ. A long-range plan to which everything would be brought together and summed up in him, which is Jesus. Everything in deepest heaven and everything on planet earth. In Christ, it is in Christ that we find out who we are. Right there. It's in Christ that we find out who we are and what we are living for. Isn't that beautiful? We find out who we are. It's in him we live and move and have our being. Christ has paid this for us and he's brought us in to the family of God. God has a plan for each and every one of us. And in, in Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, For I know the plans I have for you. Everybody knows this scripture? Says the Lord, Thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a hope and a future. But sometimes life becomes so big around us that hope and future sometimes looks a little bit dim, doesn't it? And these are the times we come running back to a loving and patient God, to re refresh that hope and that future that is found in Him and in Him alone, Jesus. And He draws us in. And I'm just going to read out a couple of things. There's only uh, some of the things that he says about you in his word. Now, when we talk about Jesus, <laughs> we've, we've been singing about Jesus. You know, Jesus is the word of God. It's, he was the word made flesh 
and lived amongst us. And what he came to do is to show us what right relationship with an almighty God looked like. He came as a man to not just tell us the way to go, but to say, hey, follow me as I follow God. He said, I won't just tell you, I will show you the way. And he shows us the way through the word of God. So let me tell you who you are in Christ. It says, I am called of God. These are all scriptures and I can give them. I am chosen. I am the apple of my father's eye. I am being changed into his image. I am a new creation. I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. I am forgiven of all my sins. I am redeemed from the curse of the law. I am blessed. I love this one, blessed. Because blessed means that you're empowered to prosper. I love that, don't you? Empowered to prosper in your relationships. Empowered to prosper in your businesses. Empowered to prosper in your mind. I am the elect. I am victorious. I am above from above and not beneath. I am one with Christ and I am fearfully and wonderfully made and I have been set free. I love that. I love it. But I want to challenge you today that it's not just when you give yourself to Christ, but every day we have to choose to put on Christ, to walk in Christ. Christ says to abide in me or to abide in the vine. And that's to abide in our identity that's planned in the word of God. Not with what other things have said and the situations, but it's the renewing our mind to his purposes and plans. Makes us or brings out the very God in us. That we can walk in his purposes and plan and being, bring heaven to earth. But this identity... You know, when we look in the mirror, when I was in Bible college, um, one, of my, uh, one of the real turning points for me was people used to always say the word righteous, you're righteous. And me, righteous means you're right standing with, the, with God. Right standing it means you don't need to be afraid. You don't need to, you're in right standing. And we're through Christ in right standing. But you know, it was hard for me to stand in front of a mirror and to see these things. You know, and I used to have to practice it. And it was hard because my identity was here and it needed to shift and to come over to here. Have you ever, have you ever been to um, one of those shows? Um, I used to go to uh, Luna Park. We went a few times as kids. And in Luna Park, there's a place called Coney Island. And there's these funny mirrors in Coney Island. Have you seen those funny mirrors? And in one mirror over here, you know, you can see it. It's you. But you're really tall and skinny and you're like, you know, it looks like me. It moves like me. But it's, it, there's something wrong with this picture, isn't it? And then you step over to this next one over here and you're really short and fat. And again, it looks like me. And sometimes, but there's a distortion there. Sometimes there's those words that have been spoken against us. People or unforgiveness. Things that actually have challenged our identity in Christ and taken us on a, a detour. And there's another mirror that you step over this next one and it makes you all wiggly, you know, and things again, it looks like you, but this, this, it's distorted. And sometimes that's your successes and your failures. It's distorted your view. It's distorted your, your God perspective of the mirror. And then we step over to the next one. And the word of God is called the mirror of the word of God. And it actually tells you who you are, what God's called you to be, and how beautiful and treasured you are, how, how valuable and significant, and that you're a part of something that is so miraculous called the body of Christ. And even though we've done some things to tarnish that, he calls us his own. And we can come to him knowing and he loves us. And instead of running and hiding from God, we run to God and say, I missed it. I'm sorry. And he collects us up into his arms. He says, okay, we'll do it better next time. I want the best for you. See, sin is a trap. 
in that it actually is a counterfeit of the goodness of God. And we buy into it. It's a counterfeit. It doesn't... Sin has never, well, in my life, has never actually paid the good dividends. It, for momentarily, maybe a couple of seconds, whatever it is. But in the long term, sin never pays good dividends, does it? You always get caught. There's always a problem. It always it puts, a, it puts a barrier between you and others. But God has called us to walk in union with him. It doesn't mean we don't make mistakes and don't have to run back. But he's made a way that our sins are forgiven. Sin is not the issue. Sin is not the issue. Jesus said, it's finished. Sin has been paid in full. It's us renewing our mind to what God has got. I've got a couple of great books here today. Um, Joyce Meyer, The Battlefield of the Mind. Anybody ever read it? It's a great book. Battlefield of the Mind, great book. And another one of um, Margaret Court's, Train Your Brain. Train Your Brain. I don't know about you, but I've got to train my brain. I've got to train my brain to think on the answer and not the problem. Because when I think on the problem, anxiety, fear, all those things come. But when I think on the answer, it allows Holy God to bring heaven to earth through my life. So I have a choice. And then my first point here today is that we have a choice of what we choose that goes on in our mind. We have a choice of what we look at, what we listen to. We have a choice. And we choose him. Choose the word of God. Choose what God says about you. I am a child of God. And it's a choice you're going to make every day until that we realign into that way and then you still need to remind yourself because life happens doesn't it life happens it's one of those things you can never afford to get away from is renewing your mind to the word of God and what God says about about you I'm going to say um, the second point here is to be established in the word of God your identity is what God says you are Meg spoke last night that there's a battle going on and the battle is in our minds, a lot of the situations. We have to make a choice. And it goes back to that first one. There's always going to be a battle. Remember in Ephesians 6, it says, we're in a battle. We need a battle armor. The helmet of salvation. Knowing that all the things that Christ has bought for us protects our mind. The breastplate of righteousness that sits over and protects our vital organs. The shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, the, the readiness of the gospel and the belt of truth. We have to choose these things, put on the full armor of God that we may be able to stand against the devil. Now with this um, be established, allowing God to root you and ground you in the word of God. I'm going to read um, a, a, a scripture here. And it's in Proverbs 4, and I'm going to read this in the Passion Translation. It talks about keeping your heart with all diligence. Diligence is a good word, isn't it? But diligence is a consistent effort. If you're diligent, it's not somebody who's like, oh, yeah, no, diligent. And it's important to be diligent with this stuff. And it says this, Proverbs 4.21 in the Passion, it says, fill your, fill your thoughts with my words until they penetrate deep into your spirit. Then as you unwrap my words, they'll impart true life and radiate health to the very core of your being. Now, when we say core radiate health, it's not just not health to your body. It's health to your spirit, soul, and body. There's some wounds in our soul that God wants to bring health and wholeness to. Some wounds of, un, you know, words that have been spoken or actions, things that actually have wounded us. But God's wanting to bring health and wholeness, healing, restoration, and a hope and a future into those areas. 
And the scripture goes on and it says, Above all, guard the affections of your heart, for they affect all that you are. Pay attention to the welfare of your innermost being, for from there flows the wellsprings of life. So to keep your heart. How do I keep my heart? Keeping it free of unforgiveness, resentment, uh, bitterness, jealousies, impatience. And nobody else does there. Sometimes impatience, all those things. Keep your heart. This is up to you. This is not a God thing. He's given you everything for life and godliness. We are where we are today from some of our choices. Don't get me wrong, I know stuff happens. And stuff has happened to a lot of different people in a lot of different ways. But every day we get to make choices of moving forward. And what does that look like? Do we believe the word of God to say, yes, I am a child of God. I am loved and I accept that even though I make mistakes, it doesn't matter. Today and every day, I am loved and accepted by my heavenly Father. And I will keep my heart with all diligence. Keep it. That's an action. In 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 7, in the New King James, it says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For our weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Our thoughts rise against the knowledge of God. Yeah, yeah, I knew I was going to fail at that. Da, da, da. I knew that was going to happen. Da, da, da. No. Stuff does happen. But it's important that we choose to walk according to his ways. Choose to put on. You know what? God's got this. And he has. All of us here are miracles of God. All of us are miracles of God. God. What God has done in our lives, that we come and worship an almighty God. And we sometimes forget that. But it's so important to keep that fresh. And this is where the passion comes in. I'm passionately in love with God. I'm a passionate lover of him because I know who I was. I know the challenges I faced. And the, many of the things that I walk in strength today in is only because of the grace of God. His goodness knows no bounds. His mercies endure forever. He will never leave us nor forsake us. In Romans it takes us, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing. Except you, your choices. In Proverbs 23, it... Um, <laughs> it says, in Proverbs 23, 7, it says, As a man thinketh, so is he. As a man thinketh, so is he. We will become what we continue to behold. This is why God has called us to look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Look to him, the word of God, and to allow that to wash our brain. Now, some people say that, you know, have used that word brainwashing. And they say, oh, Christians, whatever, brainwashing. I've got to tell you, personally, I'm just talking for myself, I need to wash my brain. Anybody else get a grubby brain? We wash our hair, we wash our clothes, we wash our car, we wash our house, we wash everything. I've got to wash my brain because I've got to tell you, it gets a bit grubby. Anybody else's brain get grubby? How do we wash it? With the water of the Word of God. We can read over that chapter of Ephesians every day that I'm called, I am chosen, I am blessed. And with that, for me, it's, it made an incredible difference. The person that left to Bible college when I was 22 and the person that came back a few years later was very different. I was quiet and sweet. I know you guys have a hard time believing that. I was quiet and sweet, kind of gentle. But you know what? The confidence that I have, not in myself, but in the word of God, 
knowing what he says about me. These things were just grounded into my heart. And they were just, it's funny, you know, we, we think that it doesn't matter what we listen to. But listen, guys, what you listen to and what you see goes into your brain. And what you're thinking about continues to go on, starts to come out of your mouth. You can sit with a person for 30 minutes and start to say, see where they are. Because you can hear where they are, what's coming out of their mouth. And what's coming out of their mouth continually will start, they'll believe that and they'll believe that as a belief system. And that will get into their heart. And that's what it says, but to keep your heart with all diligence. We need to realign our hearts with the Word of God. Realign our lives with the Spirit of God that He can lead and direct us through the obstacles of life. And there is obstacles. But He says He has overcome. Who has overcome? Christ. And Christ is in us. It's Christ in us, the hope of glory. It's the God we carry to the community that shifts and changes things. We're the body of Christ. They called us his ambassadors. His ambassadors. Carry Christ. But we need to be careful about the way we think ourselves. I used to get, I had used to have a very fierce temper. And as I with my very fierce temper, I'm checking my timing, sorry. With my fierce temper, I used to say things. Oh, I'm not even going to repeat the things I used to say. But I used to say... What shifted and changed me was that there is no situation out here bigger than the God inside of me. So even though sometimes I just see red and want to just see red, <laughs> I'd have to say there's nothing bigger than the God inside of me. He's the God of the universe. There is no problem. There's no insecurity. There's nothing out there that can shift the God in here. But that's a decision. A decision we make every day. All right. And the last thing is I just want to say is to be consistently consistent. My pastor used to say this, has prayed this over my life for ages. In Romans 12, 2, it says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and the acceptable and the perfect will of God. We are the ambassadors. But do not be conformed. This is a consistently consistent thing. You choose. Choose this day who you will serve. Choose this day. And every day. In this, in this book here, Train Your Brain, it says that the brain is the control center of your life. It's a good book. Um, but it's, it's true. It's like the control center. What we choose to filter through our brain comes out in our lives. Choose wisely. Be founded in the word of God. Remember that we've always got to come back to who we are in Christ. That is the very core of our being. So these points today is to choose to align yourself with the purposes of God that Jesus is the center of it all. <laughs> He's the center of it all. The center of my words, the center of my thoughts, the center of my heart. I'm founded and rooted and grounded in him. And I'm established. These things cannot be shaken. Even though some things can rise up against us, don't we? They give us a little bit of a shake. But be established in your identity of who Christ has made you to be. The word of God. But also, I want to encourage you to dig out some of those prophetic words. It's the living word of God too. Have a look. Establish yourself, your identity to what God says you are. Meg spoke last night. The battle is going on. And be consistently consistent. You know what? You can't consistently behave in a way you don't see yourself. It's hard to. But when you start to realign your identity with an almighty God, your consistency keeps on going. It's who you are and what God has put in you. In 2 Timothy, 
1, 7, it says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power of love and a sound mind. He has given us it. And we have to choose to walk in that every day. This is, the, I know you've heard this message before, guys, but this is just a message of encouragement to know that he got, God loves you. Wherever you are and whatever has happened, that God's got a plan and a purpose and it's good for good and not for evil. It's for you to be the very best version of yourself and that you continue to thrive. God's called us to thrive in life. And because that, it's actually God's kingdom coming to us and through us. Let's just finish there. Father God, we just thank you that your goodness knows no bounds to us, that we are children of the Most High God, not because of something that we have done, but because of what Jesus has done. We just thank you, Father God, for the package of Christ. We thank you, Father God, that he paid our price on the cross, that we can walk free from the things that have that that were we chalked up, that he paid the price and it's paid in full. Today, Father God, we choose to walk free of the mistakes of our past and into what you've called us to, to walk in freedom, to walk in light, to walk in confidence and love, love and respect with one another. And we just honour you in the midst of it. So, Father God, we just thank you. Thank you that you're the great, the God of heaven and earth. And we just thank you that Jesus is the center of it all. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. I hope you guys have a wonderful holiday. This is, um, I know it's a long weekend, but have an amazing, have a, have a time of rest, reconnect with the family, and just enjoy. Take Jesus into the marketplace. Remember, like we shouted, you are the shouting of Jesus. Don't sh take him in your heart. Love and accept others. Enjoy people. Value and respect them. We're all one in Christ. Amen? Amen. Thank you.